best practices. So not exactly the uh, exact question we're answering here, but as far as best practice in marketing, marketing and how to get the best result out of your marketing spend. So one of the things I've been noticing as of late in the service industry, whether it's lawn care, home cleaning, pest control, pool services, is that a lot of the franchises or larger companies, um, and even a few of the smaller companies that are adopting uh, basically automations or even simple email blasts through different functions like MailChimp, Constant Contact, or Service Autopilot is uh, they're diving in head first with literally no education and no background how it should be done. And they're alienating their future clients and their current clients as well. So the idea is I want to break down life cycle marketing, what it is, what it isn't, and how it should actually be done in best practice. So uh, kind of like I alluded earlier in this video, uh, there's a lot of examples of what not to do right now. So there's a lot of folks getting into the automations game and going into um, email marketing and going out and doing email blasts. And what it is, it's basically a uh, casting a broad net over, over, over their whole database but the messaging is completely wrong. They're coming off uh, more of a spam or sleazy salesperson. And that's where life cycle marketing is the complete opposite. This is something I've been doing in my lawn care company now for eight or nine years, spent probably over $150,000 literally going out and finding the best consultants in the industry, um, pretty much outside of lawn care, but in the automations and life cycle marketing. Uh, ecosystem. And this is something that we went and learned before we went out and actually executed. And it was a game changer for us. Where a lot of these companies right now that are going in and getting into the automations game, brand new, um, kind of a little wet behind the ears. They don't really know what they're doing. They're testing the waters. They haven't put the time into an invest of how to properly do it. So a prime example of how to do it wrong is literally going out and sending an email blast out to your whole entire database leads and clients. Uh, I saw this recently uh, with a, a larger company, won't name it obviously, but uh, the idea was that, hey, it is time to renew for your lawn care uh, fertilization or uh, lawn mowing. And if you haven't signed up yet, please click the link below to get a, a renewed estimate or sign back up. If you've already signed up or you've canceled our services for some reason, please ignore this message. Um, we're just basically sending this email blast out if you haven't signed up. So A, what that says is you don't care about your customers. It's not a personal conversation and you've alienated basically the ability to go out and get your actual consumer, your future consumer to know, like, and trust you on a personal level. So life cycle marketing, it tackles this and basically shows you how to segment your client database depending where they're at in the customer life cycle. So I'm going to pop up this flow chart here in the bottom of the screen on the right um, to really break this down and why life cycle marketing is important and why as a service business right now, it is more important now than ever to actually go in and have um, a reasoning and segmentation in your database when you're communicating with your future or per current client. Um, what I'm suggesting, you are actually probably throwing some money out the window as well. So the idea here is, as we break into this process, we have all the marketing sources up here on the left that your consumer or future consumer is hitting. So before they get to your website or they get to a Facebook Messenger bot, uh, on your website or social media, these are marketing sources that we're driving. So it's Facebook, it's AdWords, it's Nine Arounds, banner ads, every door direct mailing, uh, Facebook Messenger outside of just Messenger as a platform. These are the things that are driving people to your website or a bot um, to basically get a request and estimate or a quote live in person 24 seven, whether it's through the website or the bot or requesting an estimate. But the idea here is uh, before we start to segment our clients and have these personal conversations, we need to have the ability right here um, to, to get put that to basically plug that gap in our sales pipeline. So if you don't have something on your website to capture the client's name and email if they're not ready to commit to an estimate, or they start to engage with one of your bots on social media or your website, 
and we don't have a way to contact their information, we need to create a thing basically called a lead magnet. And basically, if you're not, this is the first hole in your sales pipeline. So basically, you drove and paid good money to your website or your bot, and they're just not ready to commit for an actual estimate engage with you. But at this point, through the website or a bot, we can offer something of value in exchange for their first name and email or maybe their phone number, depending on what kind of um, traction you're driving through your sales funnel. But the idea is we capture that name and email at a bare, a bare minimal, and in return, we give them something in return that's of value, such as how to have probably the best free weed free lawn or in the home cleaning industry, how do we have a squeaky clean tiles in your master bathroom? Um, and we go in and break down the process a professional would do to actually eradicate the weeds or have clean tiles in a actual shower uh, scenario. But the idea is we're giving something of value in exchange. So it's a video series, a white paper, something of value. So the next thing is here is we're driving them now once they actually hopefully request an estimate into our sales funnel. And what we should be doing is having a short-term education around the particular service they're interested in. So we're having an automated but personal conversation based on what they're interested in. So if they're interested in weekly lawn mowing or weekly home cleaning, we're talking about how a professional does it. And that's not just enough, but we want to educate them how to do it with no sales pitch to create this higher perceived value as focusing your company and you as the experts, you can charge a higher price in your market. In addition, I recommend going in and addressing a sales or price objections. Very similar to Marcus Sheridan's book, They Ask, You Answer. What are the sales and price objections according to that particular service? So we're going to shorten the sales cycle through education, create a higher perceived value. Once we submit that estimate and they're in our funnel, we want to create an automated process to follow up on each and every estimate I recommend for about 20 days. We call this process internally 20 days to close. And the secret sauce here is we want to follow up personally, once again, where they're at in the life cycle. So it's going to be through automated email, automated text, and phone call. Three communication channels, potentially four through Facebook Messenger. And we're going to be talking about the particular timing and potentially the particular service they've got an estimate for. So at say day three, hey, Mrs. Smith, it's been approximately three days. We've just submitted you a lawn mowing estimate. And that is the, the foundational part of your call script. So this would come up as a basically to do or task or ticket in your CRM, your customer relationship management software. And it would literally be assigned to a person or a role in your business and say, this is our glorified call list today. And it would literally say, hey, it's three days since we dropped off our weekly cleaning or weekly um, lawn mowing estimate to Mrs. Smith. Here's what to say. She says the price is too high. Here's some call script and objection overcoming that. And at the bottom, if she becomes a client, do this in the software. If she doesn't become a client, do this in the software. So we've created a predictable system that can be delegated that allows your salesperson or you to know where they're at in the customer life cycle. We're not going out having a uh, flimsy conversation that's generic. We're having one particular to where that person is in the life cycle of a client. Now, at this point, we have two different options. Either they become a client or we lose the estimate. So I'm going to take the, the negative path here first. If we lose the estimate, the next place you are probably literally throwing good money in the trash is we're not creating a way to automatically nurture this loss estimate particular to the service they lost the estimate to. So what we're going to recommend is going in and creating a 12 month long term nurture. And once a month, we're going to want to educate them around the service. We lost the estimate to continue to provide value. And then down this cycle, based on the service and the market timing for that service, we're going to upsell that service and reactivate them. But before we do that, we want to go in and continue to provide value, frame you as the expert, and hopefully through reciprocity, when you go to make that sales uh, basically pitch that's soft, that they are willing to go out and engage with you to request that estimate. So this is probably the second hole in your sales funnel right now. Now, obviously, we've done this all manually up to this point, but 
when you go to automate it or do things like email blasts or text messages or phone calls, we want to be able to segment that client and have a personal but automated conversation. This is where a lot of these franchises or people that are new to automations and this process are getting it absolutely wrong. And right now, people are very sensitive to what's going on in the ecosystem uh, with COVID-19 and everything else. So we don't want to take a relationship and literally slap them in the face and treat them like they're one in several hundred or several thousand. We want to have a personal conversation to get them to know, like, and trust us. This is the essence of why life cycle marketing works, but why it's more important than ever right now that we need to pay attention and put the work in before we go out in a shotgun approach and blast out a message to everyone. So you're not only going to alienate your current clients, but you will alienate your future clients. So life cycle marketing is literally the key to success in my businesses, and it could be in yours as well if you're not doing this. So right now we've got two areas. We're losing leads off our website. If we're not capturing them, we're paying good money to drive them and we're not getting a list to nurture and eventually upsell. So when they're ready, you're top of frame of mind. Next step is after the sales process. So short-term education, we educate them how to do the service and we have an automated estimate follow-up. If we lose the estimate, once again, um, if we take all those estimates and theoretically throw them and trench them up and throw them in the trash, we're throwing good money out the money out the window. We paid good money to require, to acquire those leads and do those estimates. So why wouldn't we put them into a nurture and when it's the appropriate time, upsell them the service they were interested in, create that personal process. Next thing here is if we actually make the sale, this is where we kind of have a fork in the road. So if we're going out and selling those gateway services, which in my opinion, we should be. Those are your weekly mowing or fertilizing things we can sell over the phone and measure or in home cleaning your top to bottom deluxe with a maybe weekly or bi-weekly cleaning with high and low pricing so we can sell them and then eventually upsell off those. Uh, these are the things we need to sell immediately. So we're going to create a streamlined sales process that doesn't require you to physically go to the property. We do this through a call script or satellite uh, imagery. And this was done eight or nine years ago, at least in my business, was with, with great success. But now with COVID-19 and everything that's going on, the new buying habits and social distancing are demanding this. So this is why it's more important than ever that you really need to go out and pay attention to this process, in my opinion, to be successful. So we're going to go in and take the best case scenario here, right here. So we go in and we make a reoccurring sale. So that's your weekly lawn mowing, reoccurring fertilizing, your weekly or bi-weekly home cleaning. And as soon as they come in, we want to drop them into a welcome and wow sequence. And we're going to immediately fire off an automated email that welcomes them, acclimates them what to expect when working with your business. Once again, a personal touch where they're at in the customer life cycle. This is where folks are getting this wrong right now. And we probably want to get a credit card on file. So we incorporate that PCI compliant credit card form and create a personal welcome with a tailored get the credit card on file here. Next thing is we're going to drive them into a 30, 60, 90 day follow up. Once again, very important that we build some logic in our automation or if it's a manual process to only follow up on reoccurring services, 30, 60 and 90. And once again, we want to make it personal, but still automated. So biggest mistake we're seeing with a lot of these larger companies or companies that are trying the shotgun approach is they're sending out a generic email that's not particular to where the new service is in that life cycle. So the way we're tackling is if it's a reoccurring service, such as the weekly mowing or weekly cleaning, we're doing a email that looks like someone in the office actually sent it out via their um, laptop or computer in the office. And it's just a canned conversation that we would have if you and I were talking via email. It's not a branded email with HTML coding where the whole back of the email is a color and we've got different color text and we've got logos and pictures and videos. There's a time and place for that, but this is a personal and meaningful conversation based on the customer life cycle. This is where we're going to grab if we do it right, these little issues before they become cancellation issues. Let's say we have somebody come in in the spring just for a 
a spring cleanup or maybe a deep cleaning uh, right now for the home cleaning industry. We're only going to follow up once and then eventually, based on it being a one-time service, we're going to automatically kick in to an upsell to a reoccurring service based on where they're at in the life cycle. So once again, very important where they're at. We're having a conversation. We're having an automation or a manual process based on the position where they're at in this life cycle. Following thing down here is we're going to go in and create a monthly newsletter to educate once again. So we're going to educate what they should be doing in their yard or home and framing and adding more value. Maybe a soft one liner at the bottom. By the way, we're here to help with this service if you need some help that we're educating on. At the bottom, again, and below that, we are probably going to do a mid-month communication and segment our leads and clients. And we want to talk to where they're at in the life cycle again. So if we have clients that have already signed up for, say, fertilizing, but we have a handful of folks in our database that are leads or lost estimates or canceled that have not signed up for that process, we can go out and say, hey, we're going to give you a 10% discount if you sign up the next 10 days for the first round of pre-emergent fertilizing. Um, if you sign up, so we've created some urgency and scarcity around the particular service they haven't signed up for, but we're not sending that to our clients and alienating our clients. So once again, this is where folks are getting this wrong and devaluing their services and alienating their actual clients. So we want to have that personal conversation. So next thing is we've basically now we've gone through the sale. We've created the welcome process and we've, we've got this reoccurring gateway service. Now let's take the the least uh, favorable example, but we've got a we've got a sale anyway, so we're not reoccurring. We've got a one time sale, so that's that maybe spring cleanup or deep clean and home clean. What we want to do is provide that service, and where most people fall off um, and don't make money or lose money, and this is what we did originally in Callahan's, where we didn't do this. And we realized once again we we're taking that lead and losing money on them. We want to go in and create an upsell to a reoccurring service. If you're not doing that, you're following this path and you're losing money. So we wanna create a automated but personal follow-up based on a non-reoccurring service. So if you have a, a one-time deep clean or a one-time spring cleanup and lawn care, the system automatically goes out five to seven days after that service if they haven't requested an estimate or booked a reoccurring service around the initial service, and we upsell that service. So we go in and take a one-time service and create a reoccurring revenue service to raise that client lifetime value. If we ever going to sell our business or go to retire, the value of the business goes up exponentially. And if not anything else, it goes in and creates more money in your pocket in reoccurring revenue. So that's the idea. So now that we've got our one time with an upsell that's based on the exact service they have or a reoccurring service, it's a gateway service that we can measure online or through a call script, not even having to go out to the property, which we're trying for speed and efficiency to close those sales immediately. And then we want to upsell again off that gateway service and basically add more value to the client life cycle or the client value. And the idea here is what we did in my business is 20 to 30 days after the initial reoccurring service, we would go out as a QC check and along with the QC check, we would go out and get the variables for every estimate we could do on the property. So it's a personal follow-up. Once again, we're increasing that value that we're providing as a perception to the, the new client. And we are way different than any other service provider because no one's doing that. But basically, we never have to go back out to that property to do an estimate. So now we're going to go out and take the data that we've taken and systematically upsell five to six services based on the season and the timing of the service. And we're going to pull that upsell and move it about probably a month to a month and a half, predominantly about a month and a half before the selling season starts. It's starting to educate and softly upsell that service. So if we're going into the spring and we're going into, say, fertilizing season, we're going to talk about maybe the benefits between a drop spreader and a rotary spreader, the benefits between liquid or granular weed control, the timing of a pre-emergent versus a post-emergent. But we're going to educate, make them aware of the value. So we're raising the value up again, and then we upsell the service. So if you've been on any of the Facebook groups, a lot of people that we've been working with have actually adopted to this upsell process. And it's unbelievable. A lot of them are getting 70, 80 estimate requests in three to four hours. So they're, they're adding an extra 20 to 30 
sometimes $40,000 in literally three to four days of reoccurring service um, that they would have never gotten. But it's, it's the process of being in the life cycle and talking particularly to where they're at and not doing a shotgun approach. Because if you take the approach of some of these other companies right now that are doing this, um, they're not only having bad communication, but they're frustrating their clients. People are opting out of their emails and they're not getting the engagement. But if you tackle it in an educational way that segments exactly what services they have, what they don't have, and where they're at, you are actually going in and helping them in reaffirming the know, like, and trust of your business. And that's the key to success. Yes, it's not an overnight thing. It takes a little time to segment a database, good data in, good data out, but the return on investment will last for years. So we've got the upsell of another reoccurring service. We, I've already kind of touched on it. We're going to upsell seasonally with education. So these are two huge holes in most businesses' pipelines. And then loss estimate and cancel reactivation. So no matter how good your service is, people are going to eventually cancel and no matter how good your pricing is or your presentation is, you're going to lose some estimates. But if we can segment based on life cycle marketing of you're a lawn mowing loss, esti loss estimate or you're a canceled lawn mowing client, we can go out and have a personal but automated communication, once again, based on the client life cycle and go into nurture and upsell and raise the client lifetime value. So in my opinion right now, for all those reasons and a lot more, it is significantly important to go out and spend a few few hours um, and create a marketing and communication process, first manually and then automated to speak specifically to where that leading client is in the client life cycle, create that higher perceived value, educate them, and through reciprocity, they're going to reach out. But the whole key to the game is to get your future client and your clients to know, like, and trust you. And the quickest way to basically remove that trust is to take the shotgun approach that we're seeing by most companies in blasting out emails that have heavy HTML, their colors all over the place, they're hard to read. Most email servers or, or email providers are seeing the marketing is spam, and they're not working. Um, and it's unbelievable. I'm still on some mailing lists and things I'm seeing, and it's the wrong way to go. And yes, they are probably getting some sales on a lower level from those emails. But if you look at the companies that are doing it right, it's exponential. We're seeing email click-through rates of anywhere from 52 to almost 73%. Anything over 33% is a click-through rate is the holy grail of email marketing. And a lot of these companies' closing ratios on their estimates are actually doubling and they're the highest priced person in the market, but they are different. They're having this personal conversation where their future client and the client is. That's the key to success. And with people having a lot of time with COVID-19 going on and people a little eerie about the financial situation and where things are at, it is the best time to invest the time and ability to have these personal but automated conversations of where they're at. But take a look at it. Because if you're spending money and doubling down your marketing spend, I'm willing to bet you've got five or six huge gaps in your sales pipeline. First one, uh, just as a quick review here, is going to be a lead magnet through your bot or website. We want to be able to capture first name, an email address, or get them into your messenger bot to nurture and then eventually upsell. If we have a loss estimate, we need to capture that information and segment it what estimate they lost, what service, you can do a personally, personal but automated conversation around it. Next one is we have a one-time sale. If we don't have a systematic, automated way to upsell a reoccurring service, you're losing money. And if we have a gateway service of a lawn mowing or fertilizing or a potentially a, a deep cleaner, top to bottom, um, or even a weekly bi weekly clean, but we're not upselling a reoccurring service um, after that, we're losing money. And the final thing is we should have a seasonal upsell, five or six seasonal upsells for everybody. If they don't have it, we upsell it. And then we have a way to segment our loss estimate, canceled reactivation here. So those are the six core areas that you probably have holes in your sales funnel. Hopefully not all six, but the idea is if we've addressed these six core areas, let's have a personal 
but automated conversation around where they're at in the customer life cycle. So drop your comments or questions below. Callahan's Corner, you ask the questions. We answer them live here on Facebook. A uh, little bit of different twist, but this is more important than ever that we address people where they're at in the life cycle, not take the shotgun approach because you're going to alienate your future clients and your existing clients. And somebody in your market is going to be wise enough to adapt to, um, I don't want to say a necessarily new way of marketing communication, but in the service industry, um, this is still the cutting edge of communication and marketing and how to communicate. Um, and it's going to be done across several mediums of phone calls, emails, text messages, and Facebook Messenger, as well as some other ways that are probably coming down the pipeline sooner than later as well. So uh, drop your questions, comments below, live or recorded, Callahan's Corner. You ask the questions, we answer them live on Facebook right here.